The Soul series has earned a reputation for its high difficulty, with player skill challenged by hostile environments and formidable bosses in each game. Simply completing any of the entries should be regarded as an achievement, and in most cases it is, as different endings tend to be part of the achievement list. This video discusses achievements, or trophies for the PlayStation enjoyers, which are the pop-ups obtained by completing various in-game challenges. These challenges span from simple tasks, such as collecting the Estus Flask or dying for the first time, all the way to upgrading weapons to their maximum level or acquiring every instance of a specific item type. Today, we will examine the least obtained achievements in the Souls franchise, find out what makes them so rare and discover fascinating stories behind them. We do so based on the official Steam completion statistics and the global trophy completion rates for the PlayStation exclusives. We will begin with the most common rare achievements and progress to the rarest feats in modern From Software games accomplished only by the most dedicated players. Today, we explore the truly sadistic nature of Miyazaki's development team and their games. Before I get into the first entry, the final achievement in all Souls games is obtaining all other achievements. These platinum level feats are therefore excluded from the list since they have no content of their own but we will look at how all the games stack up in overall completion at the very end. Let's begin. The first achievement is the infamous Master of Rings from Dark Souls 3. I'm surprised as I expected fewer than 4.6% of gamers to own it. Completing it is like looting your grandmother's jewelry box, but she's got 10 of them. All 107 rings in the game, including the strengthened versions, need assembling. The process wouldn't be so bad if they could all be looted, but of course, things are not so simple. First, the basic versions can all be found during the first playthrough, but the plus one variants are in unique locations in New Game Plus, and the higher versions appear only as late as New Game Plus 2. Besides, some rings are incredibly tedious to obtain. Welcome to the Covenant system. Leveling up Covenants leads to special rewards, and there are two rings in Dark Souls 3 obtained through this process. First, the Wolf Ring is granted upon achieving rank 2 at the Watch Dogs of Faron Covenant. Rank 2 requires offering 30 sword grass items, either obtained by online player vs player victories in Farm Swamp, or by killing Gru enemies with a 1-2% chance of dropping the item with maximum item discovery. Being forced to PvP or go through the slog of farming enemies is not the best set of options, yet players must make this exact decision if they also want to obtain the Dark Moon Ring from the Blades of the Dark Moon. The ring is a rank 1 reward, needing 10 proofs of a Concord kept instead of 30, and two of these items are looted off of corpses. The remaining eight must be collected by protecting players who are part of the Way of Blue Covenant or by killing the Silver Knights in Anolondo. The drop rate of the proofs is extremely low. Silver Knights are formidable enemies and only two are found per cycle for the most efficiency. Not only does the grind take a while, but its nature makes it incredibly tiring as proven by the countless comments on forums complaining about the task. Master of Rings is one of many reasons why the Dark Souls 3 All Achievements speedrun clocks in at over 10 hours. Considering how unreliable PvP can be and the PC servers being down for the majority of 2022, I'm genuinely baffled that so many players have obtained this achievement. 4.4% of players completed a pair of trophies, Rogues and Life Masters, from the original Demon Souls. PlayStation introduced trophies only in 2009 and required each of its titles to include them from that point. 2009 is also the year original Demon's Souls released, so when the early trophies sucked across most games, the first Souls title understandably wasn't an exception. The problem is that From Software seemed to have never left the original formula, but more on that later. Rogue's Trophy, much like the last one, requires the player to get all the rings. The total number is much lower at 26, but many can be acquired only during a specific world tendency. World Tendency is a fairly confusing mechanic affecting the state of the world based on the player's actions and would take an entire video to explain. In short, good deeds make it go white, while evil deeds make it go black. In reality, it is possible to collect everything in just one playthrough, and several rings even have multiple ways of collection. Ring of Devout Prayer, for example, has up to four different methods. Still, the necessity of correctly manipulating World Tendency is responsible for this trophy's rarity. Life Master's trophy requires achieving a maximum level weapon through Marrow Stones, one of the diverse upgrade materials in Demon Souls. The issue with Marrow Stone is that it improves critical damage of stabbing weapons at the cost of lowering their base damage, which is unappealing to most players. 
Reaching the final upgrade needs shards and chunks, alongside a pure barrel stone. Funnily enough, the last material can be picked up in Rotting Haven, but the first two have to be farmed in the Valley of the Falmen. Upgrading the dagger requires 15 shards and 6 chunks in total, while other stabbing weapons may demand even more materials. Combine this with needing to upgrade the weapon to basic plus 3 first, and you will understand why such a lackluster upgrade ends up rarely used. The resources are better spent elsewhere. Master Slashless Trophy and Magic Weapon form another diet of this time Demon Souls and Dark Souls achievements, and are all about upgrades. Obtained by 4.2% of players, Master Slasher again needs a fully upgraded weapon, but with a Bladestone. This upgrade path is much better than the Marrow Stone one, offering the best as dexterity scaling. So why is it rarer than the previous trophy? I think I have the reason. All types of Bladestone are found as drops from skeletons in the Shrine of Storms. The pew form is ultra rarely attainable only from the two dual katana black skeletons in the world 4-2. The chance of it happening is just 0.1%. But there's more. World Tendency can manipulate drop rates, and Black Tendency is supposed to improve it at the cost of increasing the difficulty of enemies, at least for most items. But for the pure Bladestone, there is a glitch in the game's programming. Once Shrine of Storms is in Black Tendency, but not quite pure Black yet, the odds of the material dropping dip to astoundingly low levels in the area of 0.004%. That's because the World Tendency Multiplier only applies to the Shard of Bladestone, which the Skeletons can also drop, without the other items receiving this benefit. In effect, the chance of dropping the Shard increases at the cost of every other possible loot. Someone playing under these conditions can't hope to ever find the material. I don't even want to imagine how many players trying to obtain this achievement, only to spend hours farming the skeletons with no end in sight. Soul crushing, and probably the real reason this trophy sits so low on the list. Magic Weapon is Dark Souls 1's equivalent to achieving the maximum level in a specific upgrade path. The system in this game is different from its predecessor. Outside of upgrade materials, the players must also collect embers and give them to specialized blacksmiths who can then ascend the weapons to a different type. To create a magic weapon, we first need a standard weapon upgraded to plus 5. From there, Rickard of Winheim needs to ascend it. He already owns the magic ember, so there is no need to collect that one. Then, we need to spend green titanite shards to upgrade the weapon to magic plus 5, and give Rickard the large magic ember, found in a chest where you kill Mad Logan. Afterwards, he ascends the weapon to magic plus 6, and we can upgrade it to plus 10 with blue titanite chunks and a blue titanite slab. This ultimate material can be looted twice per playthrough. It can also be farmed from Moonlight Butterflies in the Crystal Cave with a comfortable 0.2% drop rate, at least when compared to the 0.004% of the pure Bladestone. The green Titanite shards are sold by the giant blacksmith in Analondo, leaving the 7 blue chunks needed in farming with a solid drop rate of 8% from Crystal Golems. All in all, this doesn't seem that bad, so where's the catch? Well, the enchanted upgrade path also requires blue materials to complete. What confused me is that the couples of Fire and Chaos and Divine and Occult similarly share their mats. So why is magic the rarest of the bunch? If I were to guess, the enchanted falchion found in the Duke's archives is a powerful weapon. Players may opt to use it as their primary equipment, hurting their ability to upgrade a different weapon to magic plus 10. My theory is supported by the fact that magic is the rarest path of these six, while the enchanted weapon achievement sits at a 6% completion rate. Almost breaking the 4% barrier, but not quite, are the rarest Demon Souls Achievement Soldiers Trophy and Bond of a Pyromancer from Dark Souls 1. I like how the names in Demon Souls are just something something trophy. Very creative. Soldiers Trophy takes collecting to a higher level by forcing the player to acquire all unique weapons. There are 25 of them, alongside 10 special weapons crafted from different Demon Souls. The problem is that the game fails to tell you which exact weapons to obtain, and also that shields count toward the trophy too. Not all armaments are equal. While some are looted off the ground, others will see the player complete whole quest lines such as Ostrava's plotline to reach Old King Doran, rewarding the player with the Demon Brand. Furthermore, Northern Regalia requires entering a new playthrough cycle, as it's made up of both the Demon Brand and Soul Brand, with the latter acquired only at the end of a playthrough. Many other weapons need a specific world tendency, to make NPCs appear or make otherwise blocked paths accessible. But at least there is the upside of not having to farm any of them, unlike with the upgrade materials. 
Speaking of upgrades, crafting the 10 boss soul weapons demands having a highly upgraded weapon for each. I'd say the obscurity of the list of unique weapons, combined with world tendency manipulation, justifies Soldier's Trophy as the rarest achievement in Demon Souls. For the other 4.1% achievement, the players must assemble all the available pyromancies in Dark Souls. The task is complicated by a non-existing central hub where all the NPCs could gather and open shop. Laurentius does move to Farling Shrine, and finding him in the depths is relatively easy, but it is primarily Quelana of Isolith and the Engi who cause trouble. 10 of the 19 required pyromancies can be purchased from Laurentius and Quelana. Yet, to have the witch appear, the player must own a pyromancy flame upgraded to plus 10. This means deciding to at least try out pyromancies after rescuing Laurentius and spending the resources. After finding the witch, Fire Tempest is only received if Bed of Chaos defeated. Alternatively, killing her is also an option, but that is probably less likely than a revisit. Two more pyromancies are obtained through Covenant activity. Joining and ranking up the Chaos Servant Covenant awards the Great Chaos Fireball and the Chaos Storm. Fortunately, no special Covenant items are needed for once, and simple 30 humanities will suffice. Toxic Mist is sold by the Engi next to the Fair Lady. However, accessing his shop calls for the player to copy his drip and contract the Parasite Egg. That means getting grabbed by one of the egg bearers and letting the resulting infection evolve into its second stage where the egg is visible. The final 5 missing pyromancies are scattered around the world. There's actually a 20th pyromancy in the game, the Black Flame, but it's only available as part of the DLC, thus unnecessary for this achievement even on the remastered version. No changes to achievements with a remaster are striking as the next game handles such a situation differently. The 5th, 4th and 3rd rarest achievements in the Souls franchise are three similar achievements from Dark Souls 2. Master of Sorcery, Pyromancy and Miracles, with 3.9, 3.8 and 3.6% respective completion rates. The DS2 DLCs introduce new spells for each category that do not need to be collected on the game's original version. But the Scholar of the First Sin Edition does require them. You'd expect Scholar's completion to be lower than the base game, yet surprisingly it is not. I think that's because many gamers who finished Scholar had previously played the original, leading to higher rates for all three achievements, although the order remains the same. Starting with Master of Sorcery, the player must collect 29 base game spells with the majority purchasable from NPCs. It follows a similar pattern to the previous Dark Souls installment, forcing several NPC quests to be progressed. However, the biggest problem is the hidden weapon sorcery requiring rank 2 with the Bellkeeper's Covenant. The online method is invading hosts and preventing them from ringing the bells at the towers. Each successful invasion awards 1 point out of the 30 necessary, but with the vanilla version of the game sitting at around 300 daily players, I suspect the offline option is commonly preferred. It involves farming, but there's actually a really clever solution. After joining the Covenant, the Red Phantom Mad Varrior can spawn in Belfry Soul, and killing him equals a successful invasion. The problem is that he does not spawn every single time. Resting at a nearby bonfire and climbing a long ladder to see if he appeared, then repeating this process can get very time-consuming. Yet, players have discovered an ingenious trick to determine whether the Phantom has spawned. First, gamers on the PlayStation 3 noticed that when resting at the bonfire to reload the area, the console's laser would move quickly twice. However, when the Mad Warrior spawned in, these first two motions were followed by another pair of slower laser movements. This happens because the Mad Warrior's textures are only loaded for his Phantom and do not appear anywhere else, so they do not get cached. Unfortunately, anyone grinding this achievement on an Xbox 360 couldn't use this console whisperer technique. This is wild, but it truly works and allows killing the Phantom 30 times in just one hour. A similar method is available on PC as well, using the Task Manager. You watch for changes in memory use when resting at a bonfire. If a sudden spike of extra memory is allocated to the game's executable, Mad Warrior is loaded. Fascinating and undoubtedly deserves an award for the most inventive farming method in all of Souls. Master of Pyromancy finds itself in a similar spot. Most of the 21 base game pyromancies are obtainable from NPCs, with one big outlier. The Great Chaos Fireball is a rank 3 reward for the Brotherhood of Blood Covenant. This PvP-oriented covenant puts competing players into duels within one of three distinct arenas. Each one duel awards one point. 
How many of these points are required to reach rank 3? 500. Yes, you heard me right. The player must obtain 500 points to receive the Great Chaos Fireball. And one more thing I haven't mentioned, suffering defeat in a duel also loses one point, meaning that just winning 500 times isn't enough. You must have 500 more victories than losses. This is insane. Even with the roughly 2000 players playing the Scholar Edition, finding enough opponents to duel and not have it take like a year is inconceivable. Luckily, there is an offline alternative to this travesty, but the player needs to reach the halfway point of a third playthrough. Dedicated players will surely replay the game even more times than that, yet they may do so on different characters rather than entering New Game Plus and New Game Plus 2. For those that decide to collect this achievement, the Great Chaos Fireball is sold by Chancellor Velager during the third playthrough. Farming the Mad Warrior may be tedious, but replaying the entire game more than two times on the same character seems more challenging, as displayed by the slightly lower completion rate. Master of Miracles is the rarest achievement in Dark Souls 2, and when you look at it, it makes sense. It combines both the dull and challenging parts of collecting sorceries and pyromancies. Out of the 26 miracles, Sunlight Spear is yet again tied to a rank 3 covenant. 30 Sunlight Medals must be offered to the heirs of the sun. The medals are received through successful co-op summons or by farming them from enemies with, as expected, abysmally low drop rates. The best place is the Royal Army campsite at Brightstone Cove Tzeldora, with several falconers just around the bonfire. Yet this place is only available in Scholar. Enemy placement in the original differs. The second best area is Things Betwixt at the very beginning of New Game Plus, still presenting a large downgrade in farming speed compared to the campsite. Outside of the Sunlight Spear, Bountiful Sunlight and Wrath of the Gods are once more best purchased from Chancellor Veliger in New Game Plus 2, so collecting all miracles needs both farming and a third playthrough cycle. Yikes. Staying with miracles. The second rarest achievement in Souls is gathering them all in Dark Souls 1. Prayer of a Maiden has a staggeringly low rate of 3.1%. While there are fewer miracles to collect than in the sequel, it takes the Covenant bullshit to an even higher level. In total, three separate Covenants need to be leveled. The first two, Gravelord Servant and Blade of the Dark Moon, are both difficult to find. Gravelord needs Nito to be alive, and the player must use a coffin in the catacombs while having an Eye of Death. The coffin transports them to a casket where the covenant is accessible. Then, the sword dance miracle is granted upon joining, and great sword dance serves as the rank 1 reward earned by offering 10 eyes of death. Several of the eyes can be looted, but the rest need farming from basilisks. To reach the dark moon covenant, we first need the dark moon sounds ring from the catacombs to dispel the illusory wall in Anolondo. The city needs to be in its bright state to talk to Gwyndolin. Afterwards, 10 souvenirs of reprisal must be given for the dark moon blade miracle. Some of the souvenirs can be found. Hell, even the pendant can be useful, as it may be traded with Snuggly for one. Still, we must farm the rest from Crow Demons in the Painted World. Lastly, ranking up Warriors of Sunlight awards three separate miracles. Joining gives the Lightning Spear, and offering 10 Sunlight Medals gives the Great Lightning Spear. Three of the medals are in an Anolondo chest. Summoning Solar for boss fights also grants them, but ultimately, a few must be formed with a 3% base drop chance from Chaos Bugs in Lost Isolate. After that, sacrificing the soul of Gwyn to the Covenant unlocks the final miracle, Sunlight Spear. This means that at least New Game Plus is required. Furthermore, Emmet Force is tied to Sigmar's questline and can be failed, just like Replenishment is tied to Rhea's plot. Rhea in general is a source of many miracles when she relocates to Undead Parish, but she may not stay there for long. A channeler abducts her after at least two of these bosses listed on screen are slain. As a cherry on top, Great Magic Barrier is hidden all the way in Ash Lake, an area completely missed by lots of players. So you can see how Prayer of a Maiden adds up to be the second rarest Souls achievement. Several easy to miss covenants, complicated quest lines, well hidden loot, and the requirement of New Game Plus all make it extremely difficult to obtain. And now, for the rarest achievement in the entire Souls franchise, Knight's Honor from Dark Souls 1, achieved by mere 2.9% of players. It is another obtain all unique weapons achievement, much like Soldier's Trophy listed earlier, but well, this one is a different beast entirely. We can split the 47 necessary weapons into several categories. First, there are the boss soul weapons. Each needs a plus 10 regular weapon alongside the particular boss soul. Many of these souls have more than one craftable weapon, with Soul of Sif even having three, requiring New Game Plus 2. The first Dark Souls also has a unique trait, rewarding the player with weapons after cutting the tails of enemies. Five different Dragon Tails must be collected. Hellkites, 
Gapings, Seaths, Priscillas, and Stone Dragons. Two more weapons are acquired from Covenants, the already outlined Greylord Servant Covenant and the Dark Wraith Covenant. Both are intricate to discover. Several weapons lay around the world and are definitely the easiest out of the bunch. And finally, the biggest headache are weapons dropped by enemies. Some can be guaranteed, like the Crest Shield from Hollowed Oscar, but many are rare drops. Black Knights drop the Halberd, Sword, Great Sword, Great Axe and Shield and can only be reliably farmed in the kiln, the game's final area. Silver Knights likewise drop their Spear, Sword and Shield, but with a much lower chance. These are farmed in Adelondo, a recurring theme. The Stone Greatsword can be bought from Shiva in Blighttown, but the Stone Great Shield only drops from giant Stone Knights at a horrible rate. Yet the true crown of luck is held by the Channelless Trident farmed in the Duke's archives. The base drop rate is 1%, which is higher than some of the previous items, but remember, the Trident is just one small piece of the puzzle. What is more, even the official strategy guide for Dark Souls lists several weapons as mandatory for Knight's Honor, which are, in fact, not required at all. Some of these are the Ghost Blade, the Jagged Ghost Blade, and the Titanite Catchpole. All three have the same chance of being dropped as the Trident. My heart goes out to all the misled players who endured extra farming torture for nothing. Thank you, Miyazaki. Needing several playthroughs, a plethora of weapons with abysmal drop rates, and even the official list of requirements having false information, it is entirely rational that Knight's Honor holds the title of the rarest achievement in the Soul series. It is also the primary pain for any All Achievements speedrun because upgrade materials, souls and covenant items can be duplicated, but there is no way around farming the weapons. My current world record lost several minutes at the very end just to a missing Black Knight Halberd, the last armament left. With most of the rarest entries coming from Demon Souls, Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2, how frequently are the other modern FromSoft games played to full completion? The newest titles actually see the highest percentage of gamers finishing the deed. Sekiro is the most common at 8.4%, with Elden Ring not far behind at 8%. Sekiro cut out many of the RPG elements present in Souls, while Elden Ring held back on the farming aspect. Instead of obtaining all unique weapons, for example, players are tasked to acquire all legendary armaments, where no random drops are present. Next are two console exclusives, Bloodborne and Demon's Souls Remake. Bloodborne's dominant challenge comes from reaching the Chalice Dungeon's final depths. Killing Queen Yarnum is unsurprisingly the rarest Bloodborne achievement. Remarkably, Bloodborne is the only game that introduced brand new trophies as part of its Old Hunters DLC, but those are part of a separate list. Demon's Souls Remake was made by Bluepoint and not From Software, and the new devs paid attention to some of the smallest details, including the trophy catalog. They revamped it and replaced most of the farming with more exciting challenges such as killing the fool's idol without hitting any of its clones, or killing Dragon God with the hands of Godfists. That explains why the remake sits at a 5% overall completion rate and not lower. Dark Souls 3 has the fourth lowest number of players who collected all achievements at 3.8%. Going into this, I expected DS3 lower due to its farming. Perhaps by 2016, achievement hunting had become more popular as a gaming activity compared to earlier years. Dark Souls 2 and the original Demon's Souls share second place at 3.2%. And of course, the first installment of Dark Souls occupies the throne, with only 2.8% of players obtaining its ultimate achievement. Not a shocking winner given the game holds the two rarest achievements in the entire franchise. So yeah. These are the 12 rarest achievements in the Soul series, all with less than 5% completion rate. Many of them reflect the consistent formula from Software have used for the challenges. Tons of loot collecting while locking items behind Covenant rankings, NPC quest lines, or terribly low drop rates. Were you surprised to see some of the achievements here? Or conversely, are you surprised that some are missing? Let me know your experience in the comments and as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.